Welcome back to The Hoop Chat. I'm your host, Emily Austin, and here with me today in studio is very special guest, Brooklyn Nets' very own Harry Giles. Thanks for joining me today. Thank you. Welcome to The Hoop Chat. Thanks for having me. Of course, great win last night. Yes, thank um, you, thank you. What I think is really interesting about you in particular is that you're in the NBA, you're only 25 years old. Yes. But you've kind of had this tough caliber of play your whole life, starting from high school. You were playing dudes that are currently in the NBA all the way from that age. And I wanted to ask you, who was the most difficult player you've ever had to face in high school? Um, I think the most difficult player I had to face in high school, uh, it's tough to choose one. So I just uh, name a few, you know, guys like Jason Tatum, uh, Josh Jackson, De'Aaron Fox, uh, Malik Monk. I get those four. It's, it's a good tough four. You know, they gave me good challenges in different leagues we played in with the first two coming from USA and then, uh, you know, playing against De'Aaron and Malik in the EYB a lot of time. They gave me uh, – it was tough playing against them. Being that young, were there any players that you kind of thought, okay, they're going to make it to the league, eh, maybe they're not? Did you have, right. like, a sense of that? Definitely. Uh, those four I named, I thought they were good guys. Um, one guy I definitely knew was going to go to the NBA. I think after we played in the um, U19 – I always knew who he was, but I just think after I got to play on the same team, it's when I got a different uh, impression of him. Jalen Brunson, he had like 50 or 60 some assists with like zero or one turnovers in the whole tournament we played in. So it was crazy. And uh, I remember Sean Miller, the coach, at, he's, I don't know where he's coaching right now, but he coached at uh, Arizona when we were in high school. Uh, he said in one of our meetings, he was like, yeah, Jalen Brunson going to be a um, national championship point guard one day. And he won two national championships. So I just thought it was just, Crazy how people could predict and see, you know, his talent, uh, you know, throughout just a couple amount of games. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's tough when you see sometimes people have like a really great time throughout high school, and then right. one thing right. fucks it up. Yeah, and he is a great. He's always been a great player. Though. Yeah. I think I never really got to play against him. Uh, just, just how some things were seeded out or whatever. But I feel like once I got to be on the same team as him, I got to see how great he really was. Mm -hmm. Now. Following high school, what was your recruitment process like getting into Duke? Uh, my recruitment process was uh, it was nice. Uh, it was I hate to say it was easy because uh, a lot of schools were kind of scared to recruit me because they felt like I wasn't gonna take them serious. That since I had so many big schools, I wasn't gonna you mm -hmm. know take the time to get to know them or hear them out. But uh, uh, my process was good. Uh, I ended up going to Duke. Um, you know, happy with my choice. It was great. Uh, I had a great uh, relationship with them the whole time. You know, it was a school that was close to where I was from, so um, grew up knowing about them. So it was it was a it was a great thing that happened. What was your impression of Coach K? Coach was great. I think Coach was the most consistent out of all the coaches that recruited me. I think that's what won me over mm. because he was one of the you know biggest coaches to name, if not the biggest. And um, you know, he didn't let that affect his recruitment style. He still talked to me every week, reached out to me every week, and uh, me and Jeff Cable, we take this almost every day. So uh, if, if not, with John Shire following up. So I talked to at least two or three coaches every week. Um, so it was, you know, it was kind of easy for me because I just wanted to go off a field thing, off of who I thought was, you know, interested in me and wanted to see me succeed. And they were, you know, with me through the injuries and all that as well. So uh, they made it pretty easy. What was your deciding factor between Duke over UNC? Yeah, that's the one. Uh, it was like I said, it kind of go back to the whole thing. I just did. I didn't look at the toss up, the robbery. I kind of just want, like I said, I wanted to go off the vibe, off the field, because I'm a North Carolina kid, so you know I can kind of be in the middle of both. You know, like and do like in Carolina, but um, I actually grew up a Carolina fan. I grew up a Carolina fan because of my gran my grandma. Mm -hmm. I think most North Carolina kids we grew up a Carolina fan by default, just because of the players that go there and it's the team you see a lot. It's the team they have in the stores all the time, you know, and it's the team that everybody around you like. But um, I think I took the oddball route with the Duke. Uh, I was like the second person for in state to kind of go to Duke in like a little area. Like Brandon Ingram was first, mm -hmm. and I went. So uh, I think we kind of changed the culture. Uh, guys going to Duke. Um, so you know, happy I did it. Amazing. September 6th, this past September, you signed with the Brooklyn Nets. What was the first thing that came to your mind when you found out you made the active roster after all of the hurdles that you've been facing? Uh, it was unbelievable. I remember uh, being in Miami when I found out. Um, it was incredible. I think it just shows all your hard work can pay off. You know, so I was with my agent, so we just were talking about it since the summertime. And then um, 
you know, we trained in Miami. So I think that uh, when I made the team in Miami, it was like full circle, you know what I'm saying? So it kind of felt even even more surreal that it happened where it happened then too. So uh, it was a great thing. What do you think the hardest part about bouncing back is? I think the hardest part of the day is that um, people don't see. Like the day is that you um, – the days where there's nothing going on, you got to just work and not knowing what's next. Like, you know, mm. you got to work and not having to hear from a team or not having to check in with your GM or your coach or getting a report of knowing how you're doing. You kind of got to just evaluate yourself and um, be real with yourself and knowing, like, am I putting in the right amount of work? Am I putting in enough work? Am I working every day? Am I doing everything I need to do to get back? Whatever you're doing at that moment right now, like, it's just helping me get back to what I need to be doing. Mm. What is the next person doing? What is somebody that? Just want to get back in like me doing, so it's tough. I think the also the feeling of, un, of the unknown is tough too. Just not yeah. like say not knowing what's next. You know what I'm saying? W- waiting on the next opportunity, uh, not knowing if it's gonna happen or not. Uh, so I think that's probably the toughest part. Just trying to just stay encouraged and stay motivated to keep working when you're not knowing if it's gonna happen or not. Well, what helps you stay motivated? Me wanting to get back to where I was and just uh, loving the game and uh, you know telling myself when I was young that regardless of what I went through, I was going to always uh, get my, my best foot first. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't going to never quit, never give up. Because uh, that's how I got here. And I saw with my family growing up from things they had to go through. And I realized how they uh, – we had tough times. We had hard yeah. days. But they didn't give up. So I just applied the same thing to my life. Just a different thing, a different aspect. Yeah, well, definitely you don't quit at nothing. And for right. those who don't know, I just found out this morning. But why don't you tell us more about the Harry Giles rule? Okay, uh, HG rule. Um, it's tough because I, my agent Daniel, he brought it to me because I didn't really understand it. Um, so <laughs> I ain't gonna act like I all the way understand it, but like I still understand it to a certain degree. So like I just give you an example. So my rookie year, uh, I had you know I had injuries. I mean I think everybody know that. So I, my first year, I kind of set out to. Rehab, give myself some time. I kind of look what Ben Simmons did his first year. You know, he got hurt right before, I don't know, it was the summer league, whatever it was, mm. but he missed his first year. Didn't count against him as a rookie, but, you know, whatever. Uh, so I did the same thing, but in my situation, they counted my first year against me. But mm. uh, once I got with Dan, we was talking about, like, you know, that first year you played, you didn't. You didn't do anything, right? I was like, no, nah, I didn't do any preseason, no summer league, no pre, no postseason, no playoffs, none of that. So mm-hmm. I really just worked it out with the team and uh, just, you know, like I said rehab and got myself together. So uh, at the time, they had counted that year against me. So I had okay. a year when I was with the Clippers probably like uh, two years ago and I had got away from the team. But if I was two-way eligible, which I was, I would have made the team or mm-hmm. could at least got an opportunity to try to make the team some more. Um, but since I was – Age Dell, I had too many years, I couldn't do it. Mm-hmm. So basically, now just uh, I get the rule is just for guys who have had injuries or had any kind of setback and they missed their first year due to that, and you don't participate in anything, you don't have that first year held against you, so you can get um, you don't get it back. Well, wow, that's pretty awesome, yeah, it's cool. Good job, great. Daniel. <laughs> yeah, shout out Daniel Hazan, my guy. Good job to both great. of you, that's really cool. Yeah, it was good, it was great, and I think that was a good thing, something we were on like. From the jump. And I think that's just what, you know, made me like him anymore. He's paying attention to things like that. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Just awesome. seeing what could help me get my name out there and, um, like I said, benefit me at the same time. That's awesome. Yeah. You mentioned Ben Simmons. Right. Where is Ben Simmons? And do you think that the current narrative questioning his love for the game is fair? Uh, ben Simmons is in Brooklyn. He's here. He's fine. He's working. Uh, I don't think it's fair uh, because I think people don't. You haven't been through injuries. If you haven't been through injuries, you can't judge. And I feel like mm. if you're not an athlete and you don't play sports, especially like at a certain level when it when the grind is just like every day, like that's your 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 work is the grind. Like you know, I don't think you can really relate or you can speak on that topic because you don't know what it's like to have to work every day and put your best just just get up every day and work and have things go on and work work your tail off and work hard and work hard and work hard and you got to fail or you keep failing or the little things keep happening and it, it throws you off sometimes. It, yeah. You know, it's on question. It ain't about questioning your love, but it's just like, man, like, am I am I doing it for the right reason? Like, is, mm-hmm. am I doing things right? Something I'm doing wrong. So, you know, it don't, it ain't about the love. I think it's just question, like, 
Like, it's just for me. Am I doing the right thing? You know what I'm saying? Because I've been there. And I never did, I never not love the game. But it's sometimes it's like, hey, what am I and what I doing is worth it. Is it worth it? Am I going to be able to get back to it? Am I like, able, my body going to be able to hold up? But, you mm-hmm. know, it's just part of trusting yourself, too, and getting out your own head and uh, blocking out the noise. So I think, I know he loves the game. You know, he working, so he love to do. But it's tough when, you know, you keep coming up short. It's, it's hard to explain, but when, if you go through it, you understand. But. It ain't like he quit and he's not playing and he's right. not trying to get back. So I think that just tells it all. He just got to take his time, block out the outside noise, and just, you know, focus on himself. And how hard is body. it to block out that noise? It's tough because you're always going to hear it. You know, it's just a matter of how, you, how it affects you. I think I was just talking about that walking in. Something you got to just block out. Even if you hear it, you can't let it affect you. You can't, you know, let it uh, impact you. Mm-hmm. You got to just, like, like hear it, read it, see it, and just keep going. Even if it burn you up inside, you got to just keep moving and just yeah. uh, lock in on yourself because... If you don't have, you know, self discipline, self uh, self strength, mind strength, then you ain't gonna get past a lot of things. True. Which one of the big three from the former Nets do you think has the best chance to compete for a ring this season? KD, mm-hmm. Kyrie, or Harden? Or none? Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I hate to say none, but none. <laughs> Take honest. that fat L. <laughs> I mean, they know I rock with all them. You know, KD, Kyle, y'all my guys. You know, I and I fans of all their game. I just think it's just a little early to tell. You. I think literally all three of those situations are a little funny. I, don't, I think Kyrie out right now, and I think him and Luke is good. So I just, you know, Dallas is tricky. I think I hate to say Kyrie might have the best chance. Just because they more like, mm. you know, team, little team oriented. The Clippers uh, are looking good, though. They are. They coming around. That's all I was just about to yeah. say. The Harden and the, and the Clippers, they coming around, too. So I can't really say that. I'm going to say it right now. If Harden wins a ring, I'm going to be pissed. <laughs> pissed. I'll be happy. I mean, it's good either way. I'll be happy for him. I, I, understand, I understand how you feel. but uh, He might be your guy. <laughs> he ain't my guy. <laughs> yeah, I feel you. For sure. But, uh, all love. All you know, love. I think they'll be good. I mean. And I think I think Phoenix is good too. I think they just got to figure it out. They got a lot of talent, a lot of pieces, and like I said, guys been injured too, so it's tough when you got injuries. You no, know, I think it's very interesting when a team looks so good on paper and there's just something not working. Like, what right. the hell is up with? And the I Pistons? just think I just think it's it might just be better teams out there too. Just teams that just play better together. I ain't gonna say on paper. I mean, obviously, two of the two out of three teams is the best on paper, but yeah, it's about Facts. you know being on the court too. too so. Yeah. Well, speaking of some switcheroos, the right. Knicks traded RJ and quickly for OG. What are your thoughts on the trade? I like that trade. It was a good trade. Um, I think both teams won in a way. Uh, you know, Knicks got a lot of guards. Yeah. You know, RJ been there for a while. Still good. It ain't, it ain't like they can't play. It ain't about that. I think it's more about fit and you got to let guys spread their wings. I think, you know, quickly kind of come off the bench. He is more of a starter. You know, mm. he, I think he's more ready for that role. He's just stayed down. He's gotten better every year. A big yeah. fan of his. Uh, you know, RJ, that's like family Duke guy. So, you know, I'm always a big fan of him. Uh, I think he went home, too. So, I think he's going to yeah. be even better going home. Uh, you know, he loved where he's from, too. So, I think that was great. When I saw that, I knew it was a win. So, that was cool. And then OG, you know, he back here in the States. And um, I think he's going to rock out. He, he's a good player. He, he's in New York. But he's a quiet dude. He's chill. So, I think that's perfect for being in New York. And um, I think he'll be a – he's poised. So I think he'll be good. Awesome. This segment's called the Austin Awards, where you're going to have to rank your top three. So the assignment for you today okay. is because you, at one time, were the top recruit in your high school class. Right. Who do you think were the coldest high school prospects of all time? Between John Wall, Ooh. Zion, or Seventh Woods. And if you don't know who that is, we have a cool link. Yeah, I know Seventh. That's my guy. I'm just making sure. We're same <laughs> class. Uh... I'm going top John, three. Top three. Number one, I'm going John Wall. I got two off the strength. Uh, I'm a North Carolina guy. John's my brother. And that's the first mixtape I've ever seen. Like, when I got – that was some of the motivation I got early. Like, I remember oh. being 10 years old at one of my coach's house, and he was showing me John Wall. He was the number one player at the time. And I think it's crazy that I ended up being the number one player, too, when I got my who mixtape or ball's life, whatever you want to call it. Uh <laughs> So I think that was cool for me. Uh, I got to see him. And I saw how good he was. It was incredible the stuff yeah. he was doing, especially at ten years old. It's crazy. Um, <sighs> it's tough because I got to go my time. Like my time, like seven was different. Like seven, seven was Zion before he before Zion. So I got to go seven. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm gonna go seven woods because his mixtape was crazy. Like, I thought my mixtape was crazy. I thought everybody else's, but when his when his freshman year mixtape came out. 
I thought mine went no good. I, thought, I, saw <laughs> I was like, my goodness, like it was crazy. And you know, Zion, of course, uh, he probably could have been one. You know, but he's three. You know, he's the youngest. Uh, I put the first South Carolina goat first. You know, what I'm saying seven. Carolina uh, goat. But, uh, Zion, Carolina kid too. He got ties between North Carolina and South, so I think it's cool how all three of them kind of blend together in a way. Yeah. Um, and you know, Zion, he's dude got to, so I got crazy love for him. And he, he, you know, he one of a kind. He probably he one of one. So you know, he is what he is. He be love that it. big, that fast, that strong, and do what he do is incredible. So. It's tough. We purposefully make it hard. Yeah, You're it's all pretty tough. good. It's tough. We make it's it tough. hard. I see that. Yeah. We got some fan questions today. Question number one. Actually, a lot of people ask this. Do you like Brooklyn, the city, the I town? I hear that all the time. Uh, I love it. I love Brooklyn. I think Brooklyn my favorite borough. Really? Yeah. You know, it's my favorite one. I think we got a different swag in Brooklyn. Uh, and I <laughs> noticed that. I think everybody got swag in Brooklyn. So I love that. I, I think, think New Brooklyn's Yorkers just have swag. Yeah, for sure. I get y'all that. Y'all definitely do. Especially the most. <laughs> Yeah, I definitely do. Especially when I'm from, I'm from North Carolina, so we don't, we got our own swag. Yeah, but it's yeah, not New chill. York swag, but you know, I like New York swag. I like Brooklyn, so uh, I enjoy it. New York's like quick, the, you know. It's quick, and I like the vibe of our arena and all that. So I'm loving Brooklyn. You know, I'm, I'm with it. Everything BK. Awesome. And do you still have a purple heart? I do. I'll never not have a purple heart. I mean, my my heart is Brooklyn too. I mean, it's not like I don't love where I'm at. I don't yeah. Love Brooklyn. It's just. I it's love your where I've been. Love. Yeah, I it's love where I was at, been there. Like I got a blue heart too. I went to Duke. So like, you know, Sacramento where I was drafted to. Uh they embraced me, they accepted me. I showed them love back. It's a lot of love out there. You know, I just got a lot of friends out there that I call family, close friends, and uh a lot of genuine people that I really real genuine love out there and good fans, good people out there. So I always got love for them. So for sure. You know, I had a great time out there. So your heart has multiple colors. Right. Okay, that's fair. What is your favorite dunk? It could be your own personal favorite. It could be someone's favorite dunk that you love the most. Favorite dunk of all time? Uh, I guess I could say some sort of windmill, one leg, two leg. I mean, I've been I, I went between the legs a few times. I did three sixty windmills a few times, but like, I'm not like a crazy trick dunker, you know. So like. I don't really have that no more. I did when I was younger. I used to do that stuff and kind of care about it. But now I like the little power game dunks or in-game dunks. I like the energy, you know, game-changing dunks, you know. There's not, like, one that sticks out to you, one that you were like, damn, I'm him. <laughs> yeah, I guess one of the ones you're driving down the lane and you just dunking and just, you know, just kind of clear it out and just stare at the crowd. I like those. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't really have a name them. for that one. Yeah, we're gonna have, uh, Statue of Liberty. Statue of Liberty? New York. We're gonna find that. We're gonna we're gonna <laughs> in New York play dunk. it in here. <laughs> you gonna see it? Look at the Statue of Liberty dunk. We will. We most uh -huh. definitely will. Uh huh. Is it is it the game now? Yeah. Okay, he's gonna play a cool game with you. Thank you so much for joining me on the hoop chat. Thank you for having me. Good it was luck. Great. Welcome to New York. The best state be ever. Here. Thank you so much. But I'm saying I remember at Nationals one time we played against this team and my dad was pissed, bro. I swear to God, I got cussed out so bad for this, bro. I went on a fast break. We in seventh grade though, Dan. I went up for a layup. This man is in the air, like he pinning, he's pinning block, he's blocking shots off the backboard in seventh grade. This is yeah. crazy. <laughs> maybe maybe sixth grade. It might have been sixth grade. Think about that. Yeah, bro. He bro. was ducking in sixth grade. Normal niggas ain't touching. Hell no. Like that no. Age, <laughs> ain't doing this. I went up for the f layup and he went to block it. I threw that f behind my head because I didn't want him to block my shot. Oh my god. My pops was pissed. <laughs> oh, he he was on my he called me. I can't even say what he was calling me on camera, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I was in the same shit, bro. I yeah, the same bro, what the fuck? I said, yo, I'm, I'm not getting my son. No I'm like, son, I get it. You gotta, you got some out here flying on in sixth grade, bro. Yeah, nah. Yeah, fuck it. <laughs> you can't help that shit, man. <laughs> <huh? laughs> that like somebody kid playing against me in high school. I feel on shit. You gotta do something. <laughs> the game that I had in mind, right? Mm -hmm. So all the teams that you were associated with from college up until now, right? So Duke. Yep. Sacramento, yep. Portland, yep. Los Angeles, Clippers, yep. Yep. and the Nets, right? Yep. Me and you got to draft the starting five of players from all those teams, past, present, whatever, and then we talk about who would win in a seven-game series. Each year, each year, uh, like no, no, no. At, like at any point, like say, like say for example, right for Portland, we pick Dane, even though he's not there. So I'm picking five from Portland, or am I picking one from each team? Any team. You, we just draft. I'm them. missing the teams. All I'm missing yeah. all. Okay. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. So like. 
No, all time. All time. Good God. <laughs> <laughs> How do I even do this? <laughs> but the, here's the kicker, right? So if you pick a player, I can't pick them no more. It's like a regular draft. And if I pick someone, you can't pick them. So I'm going first or you? You go first. You, you guess. Go one and one? Yeah. Uh, like a draft. Oh, shit. Like a draft. This is terrible. <laughs> this be tough, too, for me, too. And it's all time. All time, bro. I play with. I nope. Can't help you with the, with the two, but you got options. Fighting. You got a ton of options. I can go PG. It's Crago. Dang. I can go De'Aaron. Oh. Whew. Go. Got it, bro. Point guard, I'm going. Darren Fox. Stand really? On that. Stand on that one. All right, really? Well, I got some more. All I'm right. All right, Fox. for sure. PG. You know, are we going by position? You want to go by position or we could just go sporadic like any? Point. I don't know. Uh, you position, 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 by position, position, by position. position. All right. Point guard, I'm taking Shoot. Kyrie. Okay. Shooting guard. Vince Carter. I like that. Two, I'm taking Brandon Roy. Ooh, good one. E-Roy was, was cold. That was good E-Roy one. was cold. A great one. Appreciate that. Three guard, I'm going... Three, you got options. I you got do, a ton at three. I do. Mm-mm. <laughs> <laughs> Three, let's go. Uh... Man, this is tough. You good, bro? Take your time. Yeah, I'm good, Take right? Don't feel rushed. Don't feel rushed. Yeah, you good. Them four, man. You got some options, man. Especially on Duke. Can I can I make Vince Carter my three now? For sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Vince Carter will be my three. I gotta pick my shooting guard again. Yeah. Give me uh Give me Pager at the two from Sacramento. Pager. I, I like that. I like that. Me I like that. Give me Pager. Okay. All right. So you gave me some options for the three. You got Vince at three. Right? I got Vince at, at the three. Okay. I'm gonna go with your boy. Jason Tatum. That was a good. One. I ain't, I, ain't. Yeah. Jay, I was going to go Kevin JT, Durant, I but I rock with JT. Know, I, I ain't going to be, you know, Jay, you know. I had to pick somebody up this time. Uh, Four. Give me. Uh, ooh. Give me Kenyon Martin at the four. He's a dog. I like I need, that. I need a dog. I, I like that. He's a dog. He's a dog. All right. So then, you know what? If you got him at the four, I'm going to put Zion at the four. Oh, yeah, I do. Yeah, okay. That was a good yes, one. Yes, sir. That was a good one. Great one. I have someone to, you know. Ooh, match give me, that give me my five. Give me, give me Elton Brand at the five. Give me Elton <laughs> Brand at the five. Dude, dude, guy. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So then, you know what? Yeah, I want a versatile guy. Give me uh, Lamarcus Aldridge at five. Ooh, that's a good one. That's my five. All right, so let's talk about it. Seven game series, right? Your squad versus mine. How are you feeling? He beat me. <laughs> What's Chris team again? So I got Kyrie at the one. Yeah. B Roy at the two. Oh, Jason yeah. Tatum at three. Zion at four. Aldridge at five. Y'all is cold. I'm gonna say. I say De'Aaron, Pasia, yeah. Vince, uh huh, Ken Martin, Elton Brand. Yeah, I've been here. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I thought that was, I was the easy. I, I thought was that was the go-to. You got the Duke and the Nets connection right there. I'm picking my young boy, Darren, man. No, uh, no. Nah, nah, in five cold, years, we're going to be talking about something different. <laughs> you me? Kyle, you my dog, too, Dan. You know, I had to just pick somebody up. Now, nah, I respect it, though. Because you know what? De'Aaron got some good defense, rise. bro. Top he, three guard on the way. Yeah, for sure. De'Aaron, top three, top three guard on the West. For sure. Will be legendary. Absolutely, but you know what? Curry his defense, Brand. his oh, defense, he can stick with Kyrie. He can, sure. he, he, he got that dog he in got him. All that. Absolutely. So you know, I'm not mad at that pick. My dog, he a jump shot away from maybe being one of the best point guards in the league. That's a take. For That's sure. A take. That's a I respect it though. I respect it. All right, so then you know what? Look, if it's a consensus that I can my, probably my piss the rest of my team a little bit, but it's all right. All right, so if I you, love them. Good, good if, you, if if the studio thinks my team is better, right? How many games you think it's gonna take for me? We beating y'all. 
it's about the team, not about the stat, the play. Y'all got a lot of stars. We got like the, we together. <laughs> I got the. It's different. Though. I got the stars. You got the chemistry. Yeah, that's what it matters. That's what it's about. It's about that. It's about that team. Y'all can have all the stars. It's cool. You know, we're gonna let the fans vote. Who's gonna sure. be? A, For sure. I who like gonna that. Be a, I mean, the fans gonna pick him because the fans be about clout. You know what nah, I mean? About, nah, the, fans, the fans don't know me. For real, like it ain't about. They know bro. your team. Like, they, though. They, know you, your, they know your team though. Nah, bro. I, look, I, on, I think bro. your team is underrated. I will give you that, bro. It's they got, they got watch the dogs. Film, man. They got some dogs. You got some animals. <laughs> you got some animals. <laughs> All right. Does 